Good morning uh, and welcome to UN City uh, here in Copenhagen. My name is Banu Patnagar. Thank you for joining this press briefing uh, today on the current monkeypox outbreak uh, in the European region. Just a quick word uh, on masks before we begin. COVID-19 is uh, still around and, and remains a risk. Uh, here in our studio in Copenhagen, everyone is maintaining social distance, uh, so you will therefore see us without masks today. So before handing over to the regional director, Dr. Hans Kluge, for his opening statement, let me briefly introduce our distinguished panel today, who are also ready uh, to answer your questions. Joining us online from Stockholm in Sweden, uh, we have Dr. Andrea Amon, director of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and joining us here in the studio, uh, Dr. Catherine Smallwood, uh, senior emergency officer uh, at WHO Europe, who is coordinating our response to monkeypox, uh, among several other uh, health issues. And Mr. Steve Taylor, uh, director of European Pride Organisers Association. So, without further delay, Regional Director, Dr. Kluge, you have the floor. Good day to one and all. Just yesterday, WHO announced that next week we will convene an emergency committee under the international health regulations to advise on whether the current spread of monkeypox in non-endemic countries constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. Europe remains the epicenter of this escalating outbreak with 25 countries reporting more than 1,500 cases or 85% of the global total. The magnitude of this outbreak poses a real risk. The longer the virus circulates, the more it will extend its reach and the stronger the disease's foothold will get in non-endemic countries. Governments Health partners and civil society need to act with urgency and together to control this outbreak. And there are three basic steps needed. First, carry out enhanced surveillance, contact tracing and infection prevention and control. Strong surveillance and diagnostic systems in several European countries, along with swift information sharing mechanisms, have ensured that the outbreak has been rapidly reported and communicated. However, we are already seeing significant gaps in our ability to respond that need to be filled. As a top priority, WHO has released emergency funds to rapidly establish monkeypox virus identification and sequencing in countries that have not yet got the tests and lab supplies to detect the virus in their laboratories. Still, even without all tools available to us right now, we have what we need to identify cases and prevent onward spread. Clinicians need to know what they should look out for and how to manage suspect cases. The general public also needs to know what to look out for and what they should do or not do if they think they have monkeypox. Once identified, patients with suspected or confirmed monkeypox should be isolated until their symptoms are fully resolved with the necessary infection control measures and the support they need to see them through to recovery. We need to identify close contacts of cases and support them as well to self-monitor for 21 days for any early signs of monkeypox such as fever. So far in Europe, the majority, though not all, of reported patients have been among men who have sex with men. Many, but not all, patients report multiple and sometimes anonymous sexual partners. Identifying, tracing and notifying sexual partners quickly is therefore often difficult, but remains critical in order to stop onward spread. But, and this is important, we must remember that the monkeypox virus is not in itself attached to any specific group. Stigmatizing certain populations undermines the public health response, as we have seen time and again in contexts as diverse as HIV-AIDS, tuberculosis and COVID-19. Monkeypox 
will be opportunistic in its fight for survival and its spread will depend on the conditions provided to it. The second step to curbing transmission is intensive community engagement and clearer communication. We have entered the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere with summer tourism, various pride events, music festivals and other mass gatherings planned across the region. These events are powerful opportunities to engage with young, sexually active and highly mobile people. Monkeypox is not a reason to cancel events, but an opportunity to leverage them to drive our engagement. WHO and health partners are reaching out quickly to communities, event organizers and dating apps to provide clear information to raise awareness about monkeypox infection and strengthen individual and community protection. To reiterate, the immediate need is to contain this outbreak by stopping human-to-human -human transmission and for this the first two steps are key. The third step is genuine and unselfish regional collaboration, urgently now and in the longer term. Even as we address the present, we must look to the future while drawing upon lessons stemming from a global crisis still very much with us, the COVID-19. For decades, monkeypox has been endemic in parts of Western and Central Africa, and for decades it has been neglected by the rest of the world. Now that it's in Europe and elsewhere, we have seen yet again how a challenge in one part of the world can so easily and quickly be a challenge for all of us, and how we must all work together to ensure a coordinated response that is fair to one and all, especially the most vulnerable. But have we truly learned these lessons? There currently are limited amounts of vaccines and antivirals for and limited data on their use. Mass vaccination is not recommended or needed at this time. Targeted vaccination, either before or after exposure to the virus, can benefit contacts of patients, including healthcare workers. Yet, we are already seeing a rush in some quarters to acquire and stockpile these. But what about those countries in Africa where monkeypox has long been endemic? Should they not be part of any global strategy to address the disease? Once again, a me-first approach could lead to damaging consequences down the road if we do not employ a generally collaborative and far-thinking approach. I beseech governments to tackle monkeypox without repeating the mistakes of the pandemic and keeping equity at the heart of all we do. At this early stage of the monkeypox outbreak, our best tool really is our ability to generate and share critical knowledge across border and across communities and population groups. The diversity of the European region means huge opportunities to leverage knowledge, skills and resources, pooling the capacities across public health institutions to the benefit of the whole region. Indeed, united action for better health in Europe has never been as critical as today. I thank my co-panelists today for joining forces with us in this regard. Thank you. Uh, from the ECDC uh, based in Stockholm. Dr. Amon, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I would really like to thank the um, WHO European Office for the opportunity to speak at this event. It's uh, an expression of the fact that we are working very closely um, uh, in this um, uh, outbreak, but also in very many other um, uh, outbreaks together. And uh, we also have published uh, already guidance uh, uh, on this monkeypox outbreak uh, together. I um, uh, 
Regional Director Hans Kluge mentioned the uh, number in the European region, uh, more than 1,500, and the large majority of these cases are in the EU EEA countries. Currently, the number stands at 1160, uh, 1,160 confirmed cases from 22 countries in the EU EEA. So that is why we are, of course, also heavily engaged. Uh, currently, thankfully, so uh, no far, uh, no deaths have been reported, um, and we know uh, that monkeypox can be transmitted through um, uh, close physical contact, including during sex. Um, we also can. Uh, we also know that it's um, uh, spread by uh, prolonged um, uh, face to face contact through respiratory droplets and through contaminated objects. Uh, so it's related to this uh, mode of contact and to nothing else um, uh, that the transmission can occur. And um, what our um, efforts have been so far um, uh, resembles what uh, Hans Kluge says. We have uh, uh, supported member states to gear up their diagnostics because the detection uh, of uh, uh, a case of monkeypox is the first step that you can do in uh, controlling the further spread. So we have established, uh, uh, we have an established network of laboratories and we have reinforced this also with laboratories that uh, can provide support to those countries that do not have uh, the capacity to diagnose this. That is on our website and can be, these uh, uh, laboratories can be approached and have been approached so that um, the diagnostic as first step of the control is uh, reassured. Uh, the next step is, of course, then uh, the um, isolation of the, the cases, uh, mostly actually at home, until the lesions completely heal, because until they, the, the scabs really fall off, the lesions are infectious. And um, uh, so we have uh, uh, engaged uh, in in, in uh, 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 making raising awareness uh, among the uh, general practitioners, dermatologists and staff in health clinics, but also in the mainly affected communities through um, uh, 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 community organizations that know how to uh, present messages so that they can actually be accepted. Now, um, while the majority of the cases so far are very mild, we have a few hospitalizations, uh, but uh, uh, mostly people can actually stay at home. Uh, already in May, published a risk assessment where we consider the uh, likelihood of uh, further spread amongst uh, men who have sex with men as uh, high. Um, as well as uh, to their close contacts. And the likelihood of the spread in the broader population is rather low. In uh, that uh, joint document that was also mentioned, uh, yes, uh, that we released yesterday together with the colleagues from WHO, we address public health authorities directly to prepare for the summer and the uh, events associated uh, with uh, this time of the year. Because um, on the one hand, large um, uh, gatherings represent an easy environment uh, for the transmission of monkeypox uh, uh, virus if close, prolonged and frequent interactions among people, in particular sex sexual activity occurs. On the other hand, they also uh, present a uh, excellent opportunity for outreach um, uh, activities and public health interventions. So um, uh, we have uh, uh, advised against uh, uh, venue closures and event cancellations because that might just, uh, I mean, the, 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 the activities may still occur, but uh, less be 
people for awareness raising and and um, uh, other interventions. So um, we have um, uh, recommended uh, uh, both uh, to the public health authorities, but also uh, uh, published a guidance for um, uh, uh, gay and bisexual men and men who have sex with men uh, to to uh, how to approach uh, this uh, uh, summer festival uh, season. And um, uh, the uh, this direct engagement with the communities and with the community leaders is very important now to um, uh, see how we can uh, raise the awareness and uh, try to prevent or at least raise the awareness that people come forward when they have symptoms. Because um, uh, I fully agree uh, with uh, Hans Kluge that uh, uh, a stigma is something that is uh, really counterproductive and in my view, uh, just also inappropriate. Uh, uh, the disease uh, doesn't uh, select, uh, the virus doesn't select uh, according to sexual orientation. It just uses opportunities to, for transmission. And um, uh, so it is very important that everybody is aware of the symptoms and what they can do when once uh, these uh, these symptoms occur. So we um, uh, 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 say that uh, after the uh, diagnosis is made, um, contact tracing even of a portion of cases uh, and isolation of those cases and contacts identified can be effective uh, uh, to, to uh, control the monkeypox in Europe. So we urge everybody uh, to, um, uh, with symptoms to consult their healthcare providers as soon as possible to decrease further spread and to keep contact data tells as much as possible of those close contacts or sexual partners, as this may help in uh, contacting those and uh, also see whether their um, uh, inf infection has occurred. So stigma should not prevent access to healthcare. And uh, uh, here we should really take care of each other, uh, uh, public health practitioners and communities at risk. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Um, Amon, for that. <clears throat> As has been uh, mentioned already, this uh, specific outbreak uh, is concentrated uh, in, in men who have sex with men, and that's why WHO Europe uh, has been engaging with the community from the outset uh, to ensure that they can help co-lead uh, the response. So for more on this, I'd, I'd like to give the floor now to uh, Mr. Steve Taylor, uh, Director of European Pride Organizers Association. Steve, please, you have the floor. Thank you. On behalf of Pride organisations across Europe, we'd like to thank the World Health Organisation for their efforts and expertise to ensure that the response to monkeypox is rooted in evidence and fact, and for their commitment to work with civil society organisations like the European Pride Organisers Association. This summer, Europe will be host to around 750 Pride events at which the LGBTI plus community comes together to celebrate human rights, love and equality, but also to campaign for equality and human rights in places where they are yet to be realised. This is the 50th year in which Pride has been celebrated in Europe and its relevance and its importance uh, has not been diminished. We are reassured by the clear statement from WHO that major events, including Pride, should not be cancelled or curtailed because of the outbreak of monkeypox. And, as Dr Kluger said, we are in fact a powerful opportunity to raise awareness. We have been working with WHO over recent weeks to develop our messaging and we will encourage pride organisations and event producers across Europe to use their events to raise awareness of the facts about monkeypox so that people can protect themselves, their loved ones and their communities. Sadly, but entirely predictably, some of those who oppose pride and who oppose equality and human rights have already been attempting to use monkeypox as a justification for calls for pride to be banned. There is no depth to which our opponents will not descend to try and stop pride, and we are pleased that the WHO guidance is clear that pride and major events should not be affected and are, in fact, opportunities to share important public health messaging. As responsible event organisers, our member prides will use this opportunity to raise awareness. 
For the last 40 years, Pride organisations have been at the forefront of public health information and visibility around the HIV AIDS epidemic. Our community understands risk, but we also understand safety. And so we say to LGBTI plus people across Europe and to our allies that you should welcome the return of Pride to our towns and cities this summer, including Europride in Belgrade in September. And we invite you to join us to make a difference and to keep our community safe. Thank you very much, uh, Steve, for those, uh, those words. So we're going to uh, open up to the Q&A part of, uh, of this press briefing now. Uh, and as I said before, please raise your hand uh, to ask a question and, and uh, do introduce yourself and your outlet. Uh, we've also received some questions uh, in advance, which I will go to in a moment. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to go to Helen Colis. Uh, please, Helen, if you could unmute yourself and also just let us know your outlet. Thank you very much. Yes, my name's Helen Collis. I'm a journalist for Politico Europe. Um, thanks so much for holding this event this morning. Um, I'd, I'd first like to understand if there has been any modelling done within the World Health Organization for us to understand um, what the case numbers might get to in Europe this summer if um, containment of um, these outbreaks is not reached. Um, and then a second question, if I might. Um, Given the reports from public health agencies that um, some of the cases in these outbreaks appear to be less severe than um, would be typically expected, um, and given that the older vaccines such as ACAM 2000 come with, um, although they're not authorised for, uh, for monkeypox, but are for, uh, for smallpox, um, they come with um, quite a lot of side effects. Um, are there any situations currently where you think that the benefits of using these older vaccines outweigh the risks um, in the current outbreaks? Thank you. Thanks very much, Helen. And I'll give the floor straight away to Dr. Smallwood. Uh... Yeah, thank you very much, Helen. And um, um, perhaps this is also a question that um, Andrea Amon um, might like to, to answer in terms of the modeling that's gone on in, in European Union countries. but. For the moment in WHO, uh, we're working with countries to better get a better grasp on the case-based information, um, detailed case-based information, and that we're doing jointly with our ECDC colleagues. Um, we've already collected um, a subset of information around particular cases, and we're looking at that detailed information and analysis to better understand what the information we already have, um, and any modeling will then be based on um, some of that more factual data from what we've seen in the past month. In terms of the severity of the disease, as, as you said, um, many of the cases are presenting with clinically what we would call mild um, initial symptoms, um, but we have seen um, some cases progress into quite nasty complications, and we have seen a small number of hospitalizations because of those complications, which include things like secondary infections. So, of course, um, although the initial cases are potentially mild, um, the progression of the disease is over several weeks, and we need to learn a little, little more about that before being categorical in our assessment. When it comes to vaccinations and vaccines, as you rightly said, there are several different products um, that um, are being considered for potential recommendation and use in the context of monkeypox. Um, the clinical data around these is still scarce, and so the use will be in a research environment. And of course, for those different products, they will have different um, safety uh, profiles, and any use of those vaccines in post-exposure prophylaxis, for example, would have to be based on a very specific um, benefit and risk assessment in discussion with the patient uh, or the, the person um, who has been exposed over from my side. Thank you very much, uh, Katie. D Dr. Amon, would you like to add anything? I think, I think we're okay there, okay. Um, so we'll take a, a question we received um, uh, in advance. Um, it's a question coming from, uh, actually from, from Lucy Middleton from Thompson Reuters, who I also see is uh, online. Lucy, would you like to, I can ask the question on your behalf. Um, Thompson Reuters are asking why uh, is why are monkeypox cases predominantly occurring uh, in the MSM community? That is, uh, men who have sex with men. Can I give that question to Dr. Smallwood? Yeah, thank you, Banu. Um, well, all all outbreaks start somewhere, 
And, uh, and as both the regional director and um, Dr. Amon said in their opening remarks, this virus doesn't choose um, any one person against another. It's opportunistic in its spread. And how it will spread will really define, uh, be defined by the opportunities it has. It's also a disease that um, has an incubation period of 21 days. Uh, we're just over a month into this outbreak and understanding this outbreak. So it's too early to conclude as to how this disease will be spreading in, amongst the general population. We do also have some cases of, amongst whom are not the MSM community. Um, so we do have family clusters. Um, we do have um, uh, indications that there are small numbers of cases among um, individuals outside of this particular group. So the virus will continue to spread in the population. Um, we will take measures to um, block that opportunity for the virus to spread um, and control it as we do in any particular community. So really it starts somewhere. It uh, will spread to other, um, other areas geographically and in different community groups. Um, we do expect that further spread to occur, but we can control that by taking swift and, and rapid interventions. Thank you very much, uh, um, Dr. Smallwood. Uh, just before going to our next question, I see Dr. Andrea has her uh, ha hand up. Dr. Amon? Yeah, can you hear me? Because I, I was speaking before and uh, apparently you couldn't. Uh, so uh, just to the question from from um, Helen Collins, uh, we have started our modeling, but as uh, uh, Katie Smallwood said, uh, uh, the, the the data are, are scarce. So the models are um, uh, work in progress. Um, we also uh, model not only the, the the unchecked spread, but really the the spread with. Um, uh, uh, different scenarios of interventions and um, uh, uh, so that that is uh, what we, what uh, uh, is is in progress uh, so we we can't uh, come up with a uh, uh, definite figures yet, uh, but uh, we hope so that uh, in in the course of next week we we have a bit uh, we are a bit further on this. Regarding the vaccination um, uh, uh, it is uh, so that the uh, vaccine is not uh, uh, licensed uh, in the EU or authorized in the EU for monkeypox, uh, uh, but in the US it is. Um, so, but uh, the um, uh, the idea that um, uh, uh, is that uh, it's still uh, due to the scarcity of safety data, an individual risk benefit um, uh, consideration between the 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 the, per, the, the, uh, the person and um, the the healthcare provider. Thanks uh, very much uh, for that. Um Dr. Amon, uh, let's take a question from uh, the, the live question now from Natalie Grover at Reuters. Natalie. Hi, good morning. Thanks very much for taking my questions. Um, I wanted to start with um, some interesting data that came out of um, Italy in, in recent days. Um, they found some evidence of um, monkeypox virus DNA in semen, including one patient with um, uh, evidence of virus that, that was shown to be able to replicate in the lab. Um, I'm just wondering if this emerging data has you concerned about potential changes to the transmission ability of the virus, and then second, um, secondly, if, if you if you will, um, you know, it's been a while since WHO and sort of scientists um, across Europe and beyond have been looking into what's what's the origin behind this outbreak and, um, you know, just trying to get a sense of what's making it spread in the way that it has. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the understanding of this virus or this outbreak has changed over the last six weeks or so. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Natalie. Um, I think I'm going to have to go back to Dr. Smallwood on, on this one. Dr. Smallwood, uh, you have the floor. Um, yeah, sure. Just in terms of uh, some of the findings in semen, um, as was published last week, um, 
there are some uh, patients among whom have uh, had semen tested for virus and come back uh, positive. So that's something that we're looking at. It doesn't change um, our assessment of the current transmission routes that we're seeing at the moment, which are very much largely uh, based on uh, very close physical proximity between individuals, skin to skin contact, skin to mouth. Um, and, and that's really what's driving the transmission at the moment. And however, however, in terms of our recommendations for patients who have monkeypox, um, once all of the signs and symptoms of monkeypox, including the complete resolution of the rash and the scabs, um, have, uh, has, has resolved, we still recommend patients to um, practice safer sex with the use of condoms for up to 12 weeks um, as a precautionary measure, whilst we further understand um, the presence of virus in, in semen and, and other bodily fluids. Um, in terms of um, the reasons behind this outbreak and what we're learning and what we've um, continued to learn, of course, monkeypox, um, as well as being a widely neglected disease in the endemic uh, regions where it's known to circulate, um, has seen a significant resurgence. And I think we're, we're, we understand that to be partly because of the wane, waning uh, immunity from smallpox vaccination um, and is clearly developing a niche in terms of transmitting from humans to humans. Um, certainly we're still trying to understand how this particular outbreak um, is different, um, how the pattern of transmission is different. Uh, we need to do more to better understand what the transmission patterns are in endemic countries as well as non-endemic countries. Um, and we're also looking at the clinical presentations to understand um, how they might be different. At the moment, there's no um, significant evidence to point to a change in the virus. So um, we're continuing to look at these questions and um, these remain some of the big unanswered questions that WHO and other partners are looking at through the research and development blueprint and, and to really try and galvanize member states, public health institutions and communities to contribute that knowledge and to accelerate the learnings that we're, that we're doing. Thank you very much, Dr. Smallwood. Uh, Dr. Amon, would you like to come in or I can move on? No, I have nothing to add. Uh, I think Katie said it all. Great, thank you. Uh, there's a, the next question here we've received from uh, Maria Ch uh, Cheng from Associated Press. I'm going to go to the regional director and, and then to Dr. Smallwood. Uh, and the question is around uh, vaccines and, and access. So does WHO Europe expect smallpox vaccines to be sent to high-income countries like the UK, France, Germany, Italy, uh, since they have the biggest outbreaks? And if, if so, how unusual is it that vaccines would be dispensed to countries that could otherwise uh, afford them. Um, Dr. Kluger, would you like to come in at all? Well, first, there are several steps that we need to go through to address the demand issue, whether it's for lower, middle or upper income countries. And uh, as was mentioned already, currently there's only one vaccine that has been approved for monkeypox. And the production capacity indeed has not been scaled up yet. And as Dr. Amund was mentioning, the particular regulatory work has not been done yet. But we are trying to prepare now for the distribution of vaccines, working very close to the member states and partners alike to design a equitable mechanism for a fair distribution of the vaccines. And before going to Dr. Smallwood, I think everyone is aware of the COVAX mechanism, which actually was designed for all countries independent of their income status. So in that sense, there is a bit of a, uh, a precedent. Over to you, Katie. Thanks, and, and just to add that uh, in addition to COVAX, there's um, allocation mechanisms that WHO um, is very much involved in for other um, epidemic prone diseases, such as meningitis, yellow fever, cholera, and um, I know my colleagues in our headquarters office are very much involved in looking at um, engaging directly with some member states already that have some vaccine stockpiles, but also engaging with other partners to establish a, an allocation mechanism that um, will be fair, equitable. It'll certainly be based on um, needs, epidemiologic situations, response strategies, 
um, and of course, based on the um, readiness of the country from a regulatory perspective to receive any vaccine products. So I would just end my comments there. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to bring in uh, uh, Steve, if I, if I may, on, on um, advocacy uh, with regards to events organizers and, and some, of the, some of the events that are taking place, including Pride uh, this summer. Um, how, how do you go about engaging those most uh, at risk? Maybe some practical tips on how event organizers should be engaging with, with the uh, MSM community and beyond. I think there are several ways and really the best way to think about it is about the, the journey that someone goes on through their interaction with your event. So that will begin perhaps with social media uh, or with media interviews that your team might give on radio or television talking about the event coming up. Their opportunities to say that uh, if you have symptoms of monkeypox then you shouldn't come to the event. If you develop symptoms when you're at the event this is, this is the behaviour you, you should adopt. And then also aftercare so that after the event uh, you're sharing information that if people develop the symptoms they know um, how to engage and, and, and where to go to, to get help. Um, but there's also important messaging to share on big screens at Pride events, in posters, uh, in event guides, in apps to say uh, this is not, this is not uh, as my colleagues here have said, uh, a, a, a condition that is restricted only to men who have sex with men, although that's where the current, the current cases have been. Um, it is uh, an opportunity to challenge that stigma and to say that uh, anybody can be affected by monkeypox and these are, the, these are the symptoms to look out for. So just to think about every opportunity that there is during your event uh, to get the message home, uh, that this is what to look out for uh, and this is what to do if you if you find the symptoms but to use every opportunity to challenge the stigma uh, because that's really just going to push people away from seeking help when they need to do so. Thank you very much uh, Steve. Uh, I see Helen has her hand up. Helen is that an old hand or would you like to ask a follow-up? More questions. <laughs> Go for it. Um, thank you. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, there is um, sort of research happening into whether or not this is a as a result of um, sort of smallpox vaccinations um, not covering the population because they were ended such a long time ago. Is, is there an argument here for the return of um, smallpox childhood vaccinations, um, firstly? And then secondly, um, are you able to update us on what WHO has in its stockpiles of smallpox vac uh, vaccines? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. Uh, I think I'll go to Dr. Smallwood. I think on the question of the smallpox stockpile, smallpox vaccine stockpiles that WHO um, maintains, uh, I think that would be best directed at our colleagues in headquarters. Um, just uh, very specifically on the question um, uh, on the potential return of smallpox vaccination among uh, among younger children, I think that's a very interesting question to, to ask at this stage, but I would um, point towards the difference between smallpox and monkeypox. Um, and that's namely that uh, monkeypox uh, has a continuous uh, uh, animal reservoir, um, which uh, smallpox does not have. So smallpox is the only human disease to have been eradicated, which is something that was achieved through huge uh, worldwide collaboration um, during the Cold War period and uh, and that's something that has really rid humanity from a pathogen um, that we won't expect to re-emerge. Um, monkeypox has taken advantage of um, potentially this this new niche and this new ability to um, to spread with waning, vac uh, waning immunity in, in the human population, but it really counts on this um, zoonotic animal reservoir. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Smallwood. And perhaps, uh, Hans, Dr. Kluge, you might want to um, reflect on the solidarity uh, uh, needed to, to address uh, monkeypox. Thank you, Banu. That's an incredibly important point, which I mentioned during the statement. As I also had the uh, video conference this morning with Dr. Moweti, the region director of the African region, that we have to join really together, not to see this kind of more selfish rush from higher income countries, to use the few medical countermeasures present, but look from a global equity perspective. Actually, there is still 33% of the population 
globally which haven't received one shot of the COVID-19 vaccination. So this equity globally is still not solved till the end and we have an opportunity now to do better. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll take a question from the floor. Uh, Ulrike Till, if you could uh, unmute and also let us know which outlet you represent. Yes, hi. Um, I'm with SWR. That's um, an outlet of German Public Radio. And um, I, I have a few questions regarding transmission. Um, so the first is, um, you mentioned close face-to-face -face contact and droplets. But as we remember from COVID, the um, the line between droplets, droplets and aerosol transmission is a, a, a thin one. So at this point, are you concerned that contrary to what we think to know about monkeypox, this could also be transmitted um, via aerosols? And secondly, since the virus seems to be very stable on surfaces, much more so than SARS-CoV-2, um, what about doorknobs in public buildings? What about a hotel bed where um, someone infected with monkeypox who didn't know it, him, him or herself, um, has slept before? Um, so to me, that seems that there seem a lot of ways where um, people um yeah, who, who don't take part in festivals just catch it by chance. Um, so what, what do you say to these possible ways of transmission? Thank you very much, uh, Ulrike. I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go to Dr. Smallwood and then perhaps Dr. Amon would also like to uh, come in on, on one or both of those. So Dr. Smallwood. Thank you, Ulrike. And, and this is a very good question. And I think we can be clear that um, COVID-19 uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus and uh, the monkeypox virus are, are very different and we really need to consider the differences in the ways that they transmit between individuals. Um, I think we can be clear that uh, the monkeypox virus does not transmit through the respiratory route with the same readiness as SARS-CoV-2. Does that mean that it can't happen at all? No. Um, there are some circumstances and, and situations where that, um, that can happen. Um, we do have patients that have um, uh, sores and rashes um, in the mouth or the back of the throat and who test positive on throat swabs. So um, WHO's infection prevention and control guidance does um, make very specific reference to this and makes specific reference to some respiratory precautions that can be taken um, in that, in that type of situation around patients that, who have confirmed monkeypox. As you say very well, it's also um, uh, well known that monkeypox can also transmit through contaminated belongings of patients. Um, and WHO's guidelines and ECDC's guidelines also do um, put out some very specific recommendations about how to prevent that from happening, um, especially when um, patients are isolated at home and being cared for potentially by other household members. Uh, but uh, in terms of the current spread, as, uh, as we've said before, this is very much um, uh, dependent on very close and potentially um, uh, prolonged physical contact where there is um, specific close contact, including during sexual activities. Um, which uh, is really much, very much leading to the transmission between humans at the moment. Um, perhaps I can hand over to others on this. Dr. Amon, would you like to come in? Yeah, I think uh, it's very important to keep in mind that while there are uh, several ways of transmitting, we have to keep um, uh, 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 the, the, the closest attention to those that are most frequent uh, and to concentrate the uh, control efforts in, uh, in with a priority on those that are most frequent, which are the ones through close contact, uh, close direct contact. And uh, uh, that doesn't mean that we should neglect the others. And um, uh, as, as Katie has pointed out, we have considered uh, the other um, uh, 
the other ways of transmission in our guidance documents. Uh, uh, but uh, it, we, we shouldn't we shouldn't turn it around now, uh, saying that uh, uh, things that may happen uh, uh, occasionally are the main uh, mode of transmission. I think we have to be very clear. Uh, we have to tackle and also raise the awareness about uh, what is the main way how this virus transmits. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Dr. Amon. Um, <clears throat> we've received a, a, another question here in the in the chat from uh, from from the London School of uh, Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and it, there, uh, he's asking about whether any sequencing uh, has been done in or isolated in in the uh, European. Um, infections that we have found? And if so, how does that case fatality uh, uh, in Europe compare with that of the African uh, clades of this virus? Um, would uh, either Dr. Smallwood or Dr. Amon like to take that one? I can, well, I can, I can start if sure. it is okay. Please, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so uh, our um, uh, so far the um, uh, uh, those um, samples that have been sequenced all point to the West African clade that uh, is uh, of the two um, uh, uh, types of monkeypox virus that we know of the the more benign one and um, in in uh, African countries associated with a case fatality of 3.3 percent um, so we uh, encourage the sequencing all also uh, because uh, to monitor whether there are changes in, in the virus. Um, uh, but uh, so far we have not seen uh, uh, a shift uh, in, the, in, the, in the genome of those where we have sequences from. Over Thank to you, Katie, if you want. Thank you very much, um, Andrea. And only to add that, uh, thankfully, in, in the European region, um, we've had no deaths registered uh, in the current outbreak at the moment. But we should be prepared for those to happen because we do know that monkeypox uh, can be a severe disease. And uh, we have some patients who are hospitalized. And we do know that it can lead to particular severe outcomes in several population groups, and that's um, young children, that's pregnant women, and that is also um, individuals who are immunosuppressed. And as the virus continues to spread um, and um, affect different population groups, um, we will likely see some severe cases. But at the moment, um, as I said, there have been no deaths yet reported in the European region. Thank you very much, Dr. Smallwood. I'll take a question we received uh, in advance from uh, AFP, from Camille uh, Basvolet. Um, I'll go to uh, Dr. Kluge and then uh, for anyone else who would like the floor. Um, the question is, are you concerned about mutations and variants the way COVID mutated? And importantly, is it too late to prevent a pandemic of monkeypox? Uh, Katie? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat the question, please, Bani? Sorry. Are you concerned about mutations and variants, uh, the, way, uh, the way COVID uh, mutated? Uh, and is it too late to prevent a pandemic? Right, thank you, um, Banu. So the uh, monkeypox virus is a double-stranded DNA virus, which um, gives it uh, more stability um, and uh, less scope for rapid mutations. Um, so we are not expecting the same uh, rate of change in the virus that we would um, that we'll see in other types of viruses, such as, for example, um, SARS-CoV-2. Um, having said that, um, we're still looking at the um, the way the virus has entered the populations outside of endemic countries and the antigenic difference between um, the the cases that are circulating in in Europe um, and other non-endemic countries um, versus those that are circulating in endemic areas. Uh, but uh, at the moment, um, as we've said, there's, there's no significant change. Uh, in terms of um, pandemic, um, we need to focus very much on preventing such a situation. And, uh, and that, I think, has been outlined quite clearly, both in the statements from the regional director, but also 
um, from our colleagues in ECDC. Thank you, Dr. Smallwood. Uh, Dr. Aman, would you like to come in or we can... No, I just can uh, uh, emphasize that all the efforts that we are now undertaking are really to prevent that it's a uh, 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 further spread. Uh, we may uh, still see uh, some, some further spread, but we really, uh, the effort uh, is directed towards preventing uh, uh, exactly a pandemic. Thank you. Um, let's take a question from the floor. Lucy Middleton, I believe, from Thomson Reuters. Lucy? Hiya. Um, I just wanted to ask, you talked earlier about um, the different ways of transmission um, with prolonged contact. Um, and there's been evidence of uh, monkeypox DNA being found in semen in a handful of cases. Um, does this mean there is a possibility of that monkeypox could be uh, sexually transmitted? Um, and does this mean that monkeypox is changing if that is the case? Thank you. Um, I think I believe this was sort of answered in an earlier question, but perhaps um, you know, Dr. Smallwood or Dr. Amon could just briefly um, touch on it. I can jump in. Yes, so um, I did allude to this. Well, I did answer that question earlier. So um, uh, some semen samples have tested positive for monkeypox virus um, amongst some uh, patients being treated in Italy and those have been published um, in neurosurveillance. Um, again, I would reiterate exactly what um, Dr. Amon uh, stated previously that we really need to focus on the most frequent mode of transmission and we clearly see that to be associated with skin-to-skin -skin contact. Um, uh, nevertheless, um, in our recommendations, we do already have precautions um, in place for um, patients who have fully recovered. Um, so let me just re-emphasize that for patients who have um, monkeypox, uh, for the time that they're ill and until the moment where their um, rash has fully resolved, um, we really recommend that they do not um, undertake sexual activity during that time. After that period, we also recommend that as a precautionary measure, um, they use condoms when they have sex, um, and that would um, uh, prevent any ongoing uh, transmission that could occur. Um, and we still don't know if that does occur um, during, uh, from, uh, from semen. Uh, in terms of whether this represents or would represent, because again, we do not know, um, that uh, it can be sexually transmitted um, through sexual fluids. Uh, we don't know whether that would be a change, and this may have been something that um, we were unaware of this um, uh, in this disease um, before. And this just highlights how neglected this disease has been and how much we're learning about um, this disease as it spreads um, at the moment. So this again just underlines the fact that we need to invest more in these diseases that we've long neglected in endemic areas um, because they will be potentially a threat to other parts of the world. Thank you very much Dr. Smallwood. Uh, well, I think we'll take, uh, Helen, I think you have a, your hand up again. So just very quickly, your final question. Thanks so much. I have so many questions. Um, some people have suggested that maybe the vaccination campaigns should be expanded to um, be offered to all men who have sex with men. Um, is this something that the WHO is considering in its guidance? And if not yet, at what point would that be something to be considered? Thanks. Thank you. Um, again, Dr. Smallwood or Dr. Amon? whoever would like to uh, come in on that one. I can just reiterate what our current uh, recommendations for vaccination say, and those were um, issued by WHO yesterday. And in those recommendations, we recommend that um, all contacts um, of cases who um, uh, have moderate to high risk of exposure may be considered for post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, that should be regardless of the um, group of individuals or, or whether they're men who have sex with men or healthcare workers or other individuals' household um, contacts. Thank you. So um, 
I don't see any further questions online. Before closing today, I would like to maybe just give the floor uh, to Steve first uh, for any final thoughts on on uh, on on, uh, on the advocacy that's needed uh, for monkeypox, and then some final words from uh, the regional director. Uh, so, Steve, please, you have the floor. Thank you, and thank you again to WHO for really raising awareness on the importance of uh, ensuring that we deal with facts and, st and evidence around monkeypox. Prides will return to streets this summer. They are an important opportunity for communities to come together. And across Europe, we need governments, we need health authorities, uh, and we need uh, civil society to ensure that uh, we enable and value prides going ahead, but also use them to share public health messaging uh, and make sure that as many people as possible know about monkeypox and how to be safe and, st and how to stay safe. Thank you very much, Steve. And any final words uh, from you, Regional Director? Thank you, everyone, for participating, particularly the co-panelists, Andrea, Steve, Katie. And I think to reiterate our call for global solidarity, because we see again that an issue which is not being tackled in one part of the world quickly becomes all our concern. Number one and number two, that we also learn the lesson from the COVID-19 to communicate in times of uncertainty. So what we're sharing today is what we know today, but is evolving. So do not hesitate to reach out to the WHO Regional Office for Europe for any further questions. Thank you so much and stay healthy. Thank you very much. And uh, on that note, uh, let me close our press briefing for today. Thank you, uh, Regional Director. Many thanks to our panelists, Dr. Amon in Stockholm, uh, Steve uh, here in the studio, and Dr. Smallwood uh, as well. And thank you to you, uh, members of the press, uh, for joining this media briefing. If you need additional follow-ups, I know there were some questions we might not have been able to get to. Uh, please do email us, uh, and we will do our best uh, to answer those questions. So, as always, uh, stay healthy, take care, and goodbye. <laughs>